Editor in Chief speaks. Hello, everybody. This is Nia Pierce, Editor in Chief at SheAttack.com, and I am back with another video. I know I've been a little MIA, so I do apologize for that. I have been lost in the sauce. Like, I have been completely detached from most of the things going on in the gaming community or the gaming at large because. I just started getting into comic books and that's pretty much taken over my world. <laughs> so um, expect me to come on here and talk to you guys about comic books in the near future maybe. Um, here lately I've been getting into some DC stuff and um, I've been reading some Marvel stuff here and there but um, so far I'm reading some of the New 52 stuff leading up to the now current DC Rebirth books. So, um, I don't want to bore you guys too much with that, but be expecting some comic book stuff on this channel. So, if you're interested in any of that, then definitely stay tuned for what I will be putting out in the near future regarding those topics. But, as we all know, right now, it's all about E3 2016. We've got one more week to go until this thing takes off. And there are some people who aren't excited. There are some people who are very excited. And then there are some people who are very indifferent. Um, I am actually always usually pretty grounded around E3 time. Of course, there's some anxiousness there. Kind of trying to figure out what the heck they're going to be talking about. Like, what, what, the, what are they going to show us this year, you know? So I, I usually try to have, you know, moderate expectations on what people are going to show. This year... My attitude about E3 is a little bit more on the cynical side because, you know, year after year, even though these companies show us all of these great things, a lot of it we won't really actually get to play until years later. So, you know, I'm sure that I'm going to see a lot of things at E3 that will pique my interest and things that will be very cool looking. But at the end of the day, it's like, man, show me something I can get my hands on in the near future. I don't want to be the mother of a toddler by the time this game comes out. That's all I'm saying. You know, don't get me hyped up for these games that I'm not going to see for like three to four years. <laughs> and that's not to put a damper on anybody else's expectations for E3. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some bombs because there's a lot to anticipate here lately, especially with things like the rumored Xbox Scorpio and the rumored PS4 Neo, you know, these um, upgradable consoles and put the potential of those upgradable consoles and the potential of VR and AR along with this updated hardware and things like that. So, you know, there's a good chance that we will see some things this year that will turn some of us non-believers into believers in regards to AR and VR. I'm kind of on the fence because I feel like VR and AR is kind of one of those things that you have to experience firsthand to actually get. Of course, you know, the schedule is as follows. EA and Bethesda are going to show their offerings on Sunday. EA is going to show theirs at 1 o'clock p.m. on Sunday. Uh, this is Pacific time. And Bethesda is going to show their offerings on Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So I'm admittedly not really the biggest Bethesda fan so I don't really know what I want to see from them or what I expect to see from them as far as EA is concerned I'm really interested in Mass Effect Andromeda I really want to see some actual gameplay footage I know that they did hint at some things last year but we didn't really see anything in particular um, of course you know on Monday we're going to have Microsoft, Ubisoft, and Sony. Monday on uh, at 9 o'clock a.m., we're going to have Xbox's conference. On At 1 o'clock p.m., we're going to have Ubisoft. And at 6 o'clock p.m., is gonna have, we're going to have Sony. So for Xbox, I really want Xbox to really, really show us some actual Microsoft exclusives, whether they be... Xbox exclusives or Windows 10 and Xbox exclusives. I just want them to show me something that I can't play 
on my PC. Well, I'm sorry. Well, you can play Xbox games on your PC with Windows 10. But I want them to show me something that I can't play on my PlayStation. I can't play anywhere else, right? So one of the biggest disappointments for me this year would definitely have to be Xbox. I feel that Xbox is kind of having the same problem that Nintendo was having where they don't really know how to space out their first party IPs. They always want to kind of put them on one end of the calendar and that is really frustrating. You know, when I first got my Xbox and my PlayStation, my Xbox was actually one of my preferred platforms to play on because, you know, I had this backlog of games to play when I first got it. And, you know, this year there's been Quantum Break, which I'm particularly not interested in picking up right away, but I will get it down the line. But you've had Quantum Break and then after that you've had nothing else. So I really want Xbox to show me why I have my Xbox and why I should be proud to have this console. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing more ReCore. I remember that was one of the standout games that we saw last year. I really want a release date for Cuphead because that game looks absolutely fantastic. And hopefully Xbox shows us some new stuff. You know, I feel that for a while, Xbox kind of got into the that routine of only focusing on certain IPs like Halo and Gears. I want them to show us some standout titles, some interesting things like we've seen in ReCore and Sea of Thieves and Sunset Overdrive even. I would be really interested to see, you know, if they can kind of step out of that box and show us a little bit more variety. As far as Ubisoft is concerned, I'm not really a huge Ubisoft fan, so I don't really know what I want to see from them either. But I know for a fact Ubisoft is going to show us some new IPs because they've been killing it here lately. We're bringing some things new to the table, since, especially since they've kind of drifted off from trying to make Assassin's Creed annualized, which I'm glad they fell back on that because I think that the Assassin's Creed franchise as a whole was suffering from the annual schedule. As far as Sony... Um, I really am interested because Sony, I feel like, usually has a lot of variety in their shows. I think that Sony is going to show us a lot of good stuff. One thing that I can say about Sony, though, is that I don't want them to focus too much on VR. Of course, show us some interesting things about VR, but I don't want that to be their focus. For, for Sony, I want to see game after game after game, and I want to see some interesting stuff in the way that Sony does it. You know, I feel like even though sometimes Sony... Sony's conferences are hit or miss. Sometimes they're fire, and then sometimes their presentation is a little bit on the slow side. They never really disappoint when it comes down to showing us a good variety of exclusive titles. So, you know, whenever it comes to, to Sony, I kind of go in with a clean slate, and what they show me is what they show me. And usually I find something from what Sony shows that piques my interest to a degree. And since now, Sony is finally starting to roll out their big IPs like Ratchet and Clank and Uncharted and things like that, I think that they're finally starting to get their foot in the door, even though it took them a little while to get here. Now, as far as Nintendo is concerned, I'm probably the least excited for Nintendo because I already know that they're not really gonna show that much. They're gonna have their Treehouse event on Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe. And on Tuesday is going to begin at 9 a.m. in the morning. And um, this year, the focus is going to be on Zelda, the Wii U version of Zelda. And they're going to be showing off some gameplay of games like Chum Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem, which is... I don't remember the official title now. I can't remember because I am not interested in that game at all. You know, they're going to be showing us some other games like the new Kirby game that's coming out. And, um likely the paper mario game that's coming out soon of and of course uh pokemon sun and moon so that's going to be interesting for all you pokemon lovers out there as far as for me the only thing that nintendo is going to be showing this year that i am absolutely interested in out of all of that is zelda i'm really looking forward to them going a little bit more in detail about link's backstory because there's some things just from the little bit of Zelda things that we've seen that look really, really interesting to me. One of the main things though that is really interesting to me is the new emblem that this new Zelda game is going to have. If you haven't checked it out, on Nintendo's E3 site, there's this emblem that looks like the Sheikah symbol and then there's some weird 
kind of um, etching around the Sheikah symbol that reminds me a lot from the the robot ancient race. I can't remember the name at the moment from Skyrim Sword. They were a very technologically advanced society. And I think that they might kind of go that way in this new Zelda. So I'm really interested because that's one of the races in the last Zelda game, Skyward Sword, that I really want to know more about. So I hope they talk about more about that race and the more about their technology. And another interesting thing that I noticed is that Link wears these greaves on his arm that look like the Gerudo etching from Ocarina of Time. So I'm wondering, is this Link actually a part of the Gerudo tribe? Like maybe his mama is was a Gerudo thief or something. Like some really cool background. Maybe him and Ganon were actually like best friends in their childhood or something. And then, you know, when they became adults, maybe something clicked in their brains and then the, you know, the old legend comes into play and some crazy stuff happens. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm looking forward to seeing um, what is going to come about with the Zelda. I'm also looking forward to seeing exactly how open world is the Zelda going to be because if it's half the world that Xenoblade Chronicles X was, I am completely enthralled already. And I can't wait to finally like be able to ride Epona <laughs> with no restriction restrictions. That's going to be really great. But I won't be looking too much into it because I, I would really hope that they don't go into spoiler territory because of course I want to be able to sit down and play Zelda for myself. But I am interested in some of the backstory and what the subtitle is going to be, The Legend of Zelda, what? You know, so that's going to be really great. But you guys tell me what you're looking forward to for E3 this year. What do you want to see? What do you think you're going to see? And you know, talk about it in the chat below. Also, I really do believe that we're gonna see God of War 4 at Sony's conference this year. I'm almost certain we're gonna see it, y'all. <laughs> so y'all tell me what you think below. We can get this conversation going. Talk to you later. Peace.